Good morning and welcome to our midweek edition of A View from the House. My name is Mkoke Litanda. Our stories today come from both houses of parliament. From the National Assembly, we look at the latest round of skirmishes in presentations to the Police Portfolio Committee and we recap on yesterday's debate on the higher education and training budget vote in the National Assembly. We then joined the National Council of Provinces where President Jacob Zuma yesterday faced questions from members. The question you look at deals with money state departments or municipalities. Let's go to our first item. Various state departments and entities presented their strategic plans and budget votes for this financial year to relevant parliamentary portfolio committees over the past week. The South African Police Services was also at Parliament to present its strategic plan for 2012. What began as a hearing sympathetic to the SAP's budget constraints turned into a barrage of criticism for what the police services had failed to achieve, that is, fighting crime and corruption. During a three-day hearing, corruption within the police services became the elephant in the room. MPs across the political divide took turns to lambast senior police managers for failing to carry out their mandate. To talk to us about the state of affairs in the South African police services and about some of the issues which frustrated MPs during last week's hearings, we are now joined by the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee uh, of Police in Parliament, uh, Ms. Cindy Chikunga. Good morning and welcome, ma'am. Good morning, Mkokeli, and good morning to viewers. Uh, Mr. Chikunga, following proceedings at last week's hearing, uh, it seems all is not well in SAPS. Uh, how would you describe the, the state of affairs? Uh, has it reached a critical stage? Not really. Uh, the state of affairs in, in, in SAPS is, is, is that of SAPS being normal, is that of SAPS having some challenges. Uh, we're talking about the SAPS that has a budget of 62.4 billion rand, which I think it's, it's quite a huge budget. Uh, it has a, the membership who are SAPS of 153,000. Remember, at some stage, we're looking forward to having 122. We have surpassed that. The total number of, of staff establishment in SAP is around 193. That is including your PSA members and, of course, SAPS members. That is an achievement. We're talking about SAPs where crime is gradually decreasing in the country, and that is their core mandate to fight crime, and they are doing exactly that. that but of course, there are challenges that we highlighted in our hearing uh, last week. Talking about challenges, uh, Ms. Chikunga, it appears corruption within the police service is um, one major problem. In your own view, just how bad is the situation? You know, Mkokeli, the, the, out of the 62 billion rand, 70% plus goes to compensation. And then, of course, it will be 29% plus that goes to projects, uh, uh, other operations and all. And, 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 and our take as the portfolio committee is that the department must adhere to IPFMA. And, 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 and it is when they do not adhere to PFMA that then they go wrong. And we raise these issues. We set examples of things that did not happen or adhere to the PFMA uh, a, a projects or procurement of 19 million rand uh, on quotations and all. Or those are the things that we're not happy about, which we raised with the department. But it's not like it's it's a norm, you know. It's exceptions. The rest of other things, they do happen within the, the, the law, of course, but then there will be things. And as a portfolio committee, even for those things, they may be two, they might be five, but we will not then say it's fine. You, you earlier indicated that uh, SAPS has got uh, quite a huge budget. Uh, uh, whilst we're talking about corruption, uh, the, the, the South African Police Services Crime Intelligence Units has got uh, 2.3 billion rands allocated to its unit per annum, and yet they are pleading for more funds. Uh, are we getting value for the taxpayers' money allocated to the South African Police Services? If you talk value for money, the core business of, of, of SAPS is fighting crime, and, and statistics is indicating just that. And can we do more? Yes, we can. 
and, and, and police could do more. And that is why, as the Portfolio Committee will say, manage these institutions effectively and efficiently, put people that have the know-how, the skill, the qualifications in the management positions so that they can manage. It is when these institutions are properly managed that they will deliver even more. That is that we're not aware, Mkokeli, that crime, I mean, crime intelligence is asking for more budget. And also, I think I must indicate that as the portfolio committee, we have quite a limited role to play in crime intelligence. As you will know, they have their covert operations and they do not account to us for covert operations. They account to the other portfolio, I mean, standing committee. Whilst we're talking on the question of finance, one of your committee members, Annalise van Veik, expressed concern about 75 million rands of irregular expenditure incurred by SAPS last year and 150 million rand on entertainment. What explanation did you get from the senior police management? In fact, when uh, Honorable Annalise was saying that she was actually responding to SAPS uh, saying they have been instructed by Treasury to save and probably considering cutting down on, on, on numbers. And, and, and she said if the department is able to irregularly spend 76 million rand uh, on, and on, 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 I mean, that is irregular spending and probably even entertainment, they can actually spend that, spare that money or save that money and use it for compensation because our take is that they, they need to look into who are they cutting down when it comes to numbers and, and, and probably we're not happy about that. Uh, another critical issue that was raised during the hearings was the promotion of incompetent uh, officers, nepotism and the awarding of golden handshakes uh, to officers who are guilty of uh, misconduct. How widespread is this practice? Again, here it's, it's a specific matter. The, the department, when it introduced ranks, there were two ranks that did not have people who qualified to occupy. And we were reliably told that they will use those, those ranks to promote people. Our take was that they were going to use a criteria that looks into the experience, years of experience, but of course the performance, the skills, the qualifications, so that people earn promotions. But what actually happened is that somebody sat in front of the computer and compiled a list and promoted those people. So it's not about even knowing them. It's about properly managing that process, which is very critical, which is very sensitive, which even if you do it properly and, and objectively, you will still receive complaints and dissatisfaction. But I think it was not done properly. Uh, uh, some MPs have raised concern about the reinstatement of uh, the head of uh, SAP's uh, crime intelligence uh, head, uh, Lieutenant General Richard Mbluli. Uh, do, do you share uh, those concerns and uh, how do you intend dealing with that matter as a committee? Yes. When we, we, we opened our hearing on, on, on Tuesday, first thing that we did was to request the, 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 the acting national commissioner to take us through the three, I mean, three issues. That is the Katomano issue. Uh, the suspension of the head of the Hawks in Guazulu Natal, and of course, Mr. Mthuli's issue. And he took us through that. And, and, and we said to the acting national commissioner, he has our support as the portfolio committee in an event these people are investigated and there are, uh, I mean, matters or issues that say they can actually be charged within the department, but even criminally will support that. Yes, the question, uh, Ms. Chikunga, citizens out there are asking is, can SAPS be trusted with taxpayers' money and with safety and security in this country? Is that a valid question? Honestly speaking, taxpayers will have every reason to demand for value, I mean value for money. And, and it is their money and we're representing them. Even a cent that we think is not properly spent will always ask questions. But really, like I've said, the core business of SAPS is that of fighting crime. For now, the evidence says they are fighting crime. That being the case, but we also are going to say, what else are you doing? I just want to say, Mkokel, the minister announced this year that it is the year of, 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 of detectives. And, and detectives, the head of detectives, made a very excellent presentation to the portfolio committee with targets set clear, which will be able as the portfolio committee to, to monitor 
uh, for their implementation. And, and, and we think we probably might be looking forward to a better service uh, this financial year. Finally and briefly, uh, your committee is uh, going through uh, public hearings of the Police Amendment Act. Uh, what, are you ex what should we expect today? We, we, we're going to have six uh, organizations appearing before the Portfolio Committee. Uh, we started yesterday, as you've rightfully said, we, we, we received a, a very excellent presentation from uh, Professor Pierre de Vos, a very balanced one, uh, suggesting that if you keep it within SAPS, these are his suggestions. If you take it out of SAPS, these are his suggestions. We're expecting maybe to get something like that because what is more important is for people to make suggestions into the bill. Ms. Cindy Chikunga is the chairperson of the Police Portfolio Committee in Parliament. Ma'am, we've got to leave it right there. Thank you very much for coming through. Thank you very much. The season of budget vote debates in Parliament has begun. The first round of presentations came from the Minister of Higher Education and Training and of Health. We focus on the budget for higher education and training after the break. Don't go away.